Welcome back guys, it's Kids Coding Playground here. Today we'll be making another tutorial. Today we'll be doing a tank game in Scratch. So basically I'm gonna I'll show you how the game works. So um Alright, um so basically use the tank and then you use the mount use the um W A S D or arrow keys to move the tank around. But you use the click, use the click to shoot. And the boss is supposed to spawn at a thousand score, but um, I said it's a hundred, so then it, I can shoot you guys easily. So you can shoot these guys with use them click, and if you get touched by one of them, and then and then it'll say game over. Once you lose all your lives, okay, this time I'll try to beat it. So once you kill the boss, you'll win. So, I'm pretty close. Ten more lives than the Also, the boss does one more damage than the regular uh, enemies. Oh, no, no. Oh, I died. Okay, let's try again. So the boss does two damage and has like 20 health. Oh my god, I died again. Okay, I, I'm gonna have to change the boss lives so I can show you how it's like. So let's uh, change the boss lives to five for now. Alright. So once you kill the boss, it'll say you win. So killing the boss will basically make you win. Okay, so I'm gonna set it back to 20 lives and this back to a thousand. So basically, a boss will only appear when. You get a thousand score. All right, so let's start a new project. All right, so let's rename our game and name it Tank Game. Um, and then we're gonna delete the Scratch Cat because we will not need it. And then we got the Tank Sprite and the uh, Cannon. So the Cannon is a whole separate sprite. So basically, in the Tank, what I did was draw a blue square, a uh, rectangle, a light blue rectangle, and then a dark blue rectangle in the middle. And then I drew like the black line to like show that's like the little um the wheels or like the belt or something. I don't know what it's called, but and then I just drew a line right here to show that this is the front of the tank. The cannon is just a simple line. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Also the cannon, you doesn't have to be centered, you want it to make it so it kinda matches the tank. Alright. And then the boss, boss sprite, it's just a big circle. And I drew like like some, like a crack in his head or something. I don't know. Uh huh. It's just some, like some red and it's like a one of her regular enemies, like the zombies. The regular zombie, which is just a smaller version of it, except and it's green. The boss is just bigger. So, boss and enemies, and then we have the decoration. So if you want these, we will put them in the description of the video. Alright. Alright, and then our backdrop. Let me get that real quick. Alright, so now I have the backdrop. Let's um get the backdrop. Okay, let me open the backpack up again. Alright, there it is. Let's get the backdrop and drag this in here. Boom, we got the backdrop. It's pretty simple. It's just like this. Nothing really. It's just like... Uh, something got online, yeah. So let's go to the tank. Let's start coding here. So inside the tank, we're going to get a uh, one green flag clicked, and then in the beginning, we want to make two new variables. So we're gonna do lives for all sprites, and then we're going to make another variable called score for all sprites as well. So in the beginning, I'm gonna set the lives to three, and I'm gonna set the score score to zero. In the beginning and then I'm gonna make the tank go to 0 negative 100 <clears throat> so this is basically uh, somewhere down here near the bottom all right and then we're gonna make the tank point in direction of 0 if you know 0 is it's up so we make a point up in the beginning all right and then we're gonna do the movement right now <clears throat> so control forever if 
the up arrow or WASD is press and W is press so if the up if key up or I'm gonna do W because that's what it usually is so W sorry that is W that if that's pressed then we're gonna move five steps forward let's duplicate this so when down arrow is pressed or the key S is pressed. Then we're going to move negative 5 steps. So you can move backwards. And then we're going to duplicate this. If the left arrow key or key A is pressed, then we're going to rotate 5 degrees left. So we're going to use the A, D, or the left and right arrow key to rotate the tank. And then right here we're going to do this again, and then when the right arrow is pressed, or key D, <clears throat> then we're going to turn 5 degrees to the right. right. And then we're going to play it, so as you can see the movement, and we're going to make the cannon go to the tank, so then it will actually stay on there. So as you can see you can move around. Yeah, so that's what we have so far. Let's go to the um, cannon sprite. So this is the cannon. Let's get our one green flag clicked. We want this to go to the front layer. Go to front layer. Go to front layer down here. All right, so after this, we want to make it point direction of 90. Because we're facing this way, we're going to have to point direction of 90 to match it correctly we're making the line sideways all right and then after that we're going to forever uh go to the tank sprite go to tank sprite the tank and then we're going to point in the direction of the mouse pointer so let's play it now as you can see it's following the mouse you can move around it always follows the tank so yeah it's pretty nice and then we'll make the trees go to the front layer, so then the t everything will go under it. Next, we want to get a um, another sprite, so we're gonna paint this. So basically, in Scratch, to make something like, let's say you want to click to shoot, we're gonna have to make a whole separate sprite. So when you click this sprite, it will shoot. So we're just gonna make a really large box. So let's not put any outline, just a box like that. About that big. Alright, and then the code is pretty simple. All we're just gonna do is make it go to the ghost effect. So we're going to when green flag clicked. So we're gonna get when green flag clicked. So we have to make the white box a little bit bigger than the stage is. And then we're gonna make it go to zero zero. So it's centered. And then we're going to set the ghost effect to a hundred percent. So if you hide it, it will actually not activate any of this code, so that's why you gotta set the ghost to 100, so then it's gone, kind of. So then we're gonna get forever loop, forever, um, if, then touching mouse pointer and mouse down. So if it's touching mouse pointer and mouse down, mouse down, then we're gonna have to get a sprite called the laser, we're gonna name it, we're gonna name this click. And then we're gonna get a sprite from the sprite library, like the button, button the this one. So I'm gonna be using the orange one because the orange one looks better, more like a laser. So using the orange one, we're going to go back to the click. So if it's like that, then we're gonna create a clone, create a clone of the laser, laser button two. Well, we can rename the button two to laser. Laser. So go back to the click, and then we're gonna wait until not um, mouse down. So then you can't just spam lasers. So wait until not mouse down. All right. All right. So now let's go to the laser. So we're gonna code for the shooting out the laser. So let's click play for a second. Yes, and then we put the white there. Actually, that you know, it ghost effects, so it's gone. As you can see. And then, so inside the laser, when I start as a clone, we're going to go to the cannon, and we're going to point in direction, 
point direction. And then we're gonna go sensing, and then we're gonna get this one. So there's a trick to this, you have to like select the that or the second one first before you can select the first one. So you're gonna select the cannon and then we're gonna do direction of the cannon. And then we're gonna move 20 steps so then it's kinda in the front. And like somewhere in so it's not like down here, maybe like somewhere up here. Uh, we're gonna do move 20 steps so it's more centered. And then we're gonna show. After showing, we are going to repeat until it's touching the edge. Repeat until touching edge. Uh, and then we're gonna move 10 steps. Repeat until touching edge, and then we're gonna delete this clone. Delete. And then, oops. And then when green flag clicked, we are going to. When green flag clicked, forever, we're gonna hide in the beginning. And forever, go to cannon. So it's gonna always go to the cannon. All right. So now, as you can see, oh yeah, I forgot to resize this thing as well. So in the laser, I'm probably gonna do ten size. I found out that's a perfect size. So as you can see, you can actually shoot out lasers by clicking. So you can move around, shoot out lasers by clicking. All right. So that's all we have for now. What else can we add? Oh yeah. Let's add the enemies code. So we're gonna code the enemies today. So in the enemies, we're going to make a new variable first. First of all, we have to like put something in the tank to set up. We're gonna make a new variable called tank take and damage. So tank take and damage, that's for all sprites. Let's hide it for now. So let's go back to the tank for a second. So inside the tank, we're going to set the tank taking damage to N in the beginning. Taking damage. N. So this is just a variable to detect if the tank is taking any damage. Alright, so inside the enemies, we're going to get a one green flag clicked. One green flag clicked. We're going to set the rotation style to all around. I think it already is that, but we can do it again. <clears throat> and then we're going to show. And then we're going to set the size to 100%. And repeat three times. So we're going to make three clones at a time. At any given time. So we're going to have... Create a clone of myself. And hide. And when I start as a clone... When I start as a clone... And we are going to go to... We're going to go to somewhere up here, so the zombies are going to spawn in the top. So we're going to go to X, pick random, negative 240 to 240. Negative 240 to 240. And then in the Y, I'm going to put 150, which is near the top. And then we're going to get a forever loop. Forever. Forever. Uh, we're going to point towards the tank. So it's always going to go towards the tank. And we're gonna move one step, so it's gonna be pretty slow. One step. Right. And we're gonna do an if then statement. If this is touching the tank, <clears throat> if the zombie is touching the tank, then we will get an if then statement. So if tank taking damage is equal to no, equal to n, then we're gonna broadcast a message. And we're gonna name the message tank taking damage. Taking damage. And then we're gonna do an if then statement. If uh touching laser. If touching laser. If it's if the oops, if the thing is touching the laser, then we're going to just play the sound zoop. I already have it here. And play this sound, whatever this sounds like. It sounds like this. Yeah, yeah something like that. All right, and then we're going to broadcast enemy got hit after it's touching the laser. We're going to broadcast enemy got hit, and then we're going to change the score by one hundred. And then we're going to hide, and then we're going to wait 0.5 seconds before setting up another clone up there. 
So we're gonna wait a 0 0.5 second delay before doing this again. So we can just duplicate this. Just not a note. Duplicate. Take this. Put this under here and show. All right. So let's play it. So as you can see, the bullets are piercing the enemies, and we don't want that. So this is how you fix it. So let's go to the tank. I mean, not the tank. Let's go to the laser. So, all right. So in the laser, remember, in the enemies, you broadcast the enemy got hit. So inside the laser. We're going to broadcast, when I receive enemy got hit, we're going to delete this clone. So it's a really easy fix. So now let's play it. As you can see that the lasers do not pierce the enemies. So yeah, that's exactly what we want. So we will actually code the damage taking um, after this. So let's code the damage taking. Let's go to our tank. <clears throat> so in our tank, Inside the enemies, remember we broadcast the message taking damage. So inside here, we are going to want to receive taking damage. Then we're going to get an if statement. If if ta taking damage is equal to no, equal to n, taking damage, tank taking damage. Then we're going to set it to y, which is yes. Tank taking damage to y. And then we're going to change the lives by negative one. And we're gonna play the sound crunch or whatever the sound is. I just have it. So, and after that, we're gonna repeat three times, and then we're gonna change the color to make make the player no notify the player that your tank is getting hit. So we're going to change color effect by twenty five. Repeat three times, and then we're gonna clear all graphic effects after that. And we're gonna wait one second. So you don't. We put this wait so that the zombies can't keep on attacking you over and over again. So we're gonna put the wait, and after that, we're going to set. Tank taking damage to no. Back to end. Alright, so let's save it. As you can see, you can kill the zombies. Now let's touch them. See, as you can see, you're losing lives, and you change color. Well, we haven't coded the loss, so we'll do that right now. So let's code the loss. So, at the end right here, at the end of this chunk, we're going to get an if-then statement. If, um, lives is less than or equal to zero, so less than or equal to zero. Lives less than or equal to zero. Then we will broadcast game over. Over. And then we're gonna broadcast game over. We're gonna make a new sprite. Actually for now we will just make it We'll do that in the next episode, but for now we'll just do stop all. So when you lose all your lives, it'll stop all. Alright. Make this go to the front layer so then this thing won't show up. So let's go to this. Go to front layer. Oh yeah, this is already going to the front layer, that's why. But it's okay, let's start the game. As you can see, kill the zombies. Let's get a close, get hit. As you can see, when you get zero lives, it'll stop everything. Alright, once we add the game over, this should not happen. We have It'll show up game over when you lose. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this episode. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye!